Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to minister thy word tonight. Oh, give us strength. I, I, uh, I tell you what, uh, uh, being on those steroids sure give you a lot of energy, man, and, and I'm starting to come down on the other side of them now, but I had such trouble with my foot, and I thought it'd go away for about a month. It's been hurting so terribly, so they had to put me on this, and, uh, and so at least I'm not walking in pain right now, so praise God for that, amen? I mean, it's tough, amen? Well, hallelujah. We're going to go to one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 34 tonight, verse 1, Psalm 34 and verse 1. Praise God. I pray that this might be a blessing to you tonight. Lord, minister to your heart. The word of God is so good. Nourishment to our soul, our spirit man, our inner man, like we talked about this morning. we got to eat it all. Take it all in. Digest. The word of God is sweet to the taste, like honey to the mouth. But sometimes it can be bitter because we're challenged in the word of God. There might, might be some things that we don't like, but yet we got to take it all in totality. Amen. All right. In Psalm 34. Uh, here written by David in verse 1, he said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Listen to that, the humble, the broken, the ones that want God, the ones that desire the Lord. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed or happy or joyful is the man who trusts in him. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'd like to minister just a little bit on the thought here, God's guiding principles for victory. God's guiding principles for victory. Father God, I pray for the unction, the anointing of the Lord to preach thy word tonight, that we would have open hearts, hungry hearts, ears that will listen, ears that will hear the word of God, that you would help and encourage the saints of God tonight, the, the body of Christ. I thank you, Lord, asking for the anointing, the unction, the power of thy spirit, that you would be glorified, that we'd, you would be lifted up, and that men would be drawn unto you, God. We love and praise you. Thank you for the word of God that strengthens us. We ask in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. And, and praise God, you may uh, be seated tonight, church, and, and God bless you, amen. God's guiding principles uh, for victory. I believe there are a few things that we can learn in this passage here that might help us uh, in our Christian walk and experience with the Lord. In this particular psalm written by David, we see the expression of praise and adoration unto God. He starts out praising God, magnifying the Lord, glorifying God. David, we know, was God's choice. He's a man that loved God. He's a man after God's own heart. It doesn't mean that David was perfect because he was not. Uh, he had made some mistakes in life and some which were really uh, brought some grave consequences. But David would throw himself at the mercy of God, not at men, but at God. He would go to God, whatever God wanted, whatever God desired, but he would throw himself at the mercy of God. Now, in this particular psalm, David experiences the delivering hand of the Lord. David was anointed by the prophet Samuel to be king of Israel. We'll talk about this soon in our midweek service. But David had the hand of God upon his life. He was anointed of God. And it was David that killed a lion and a bear while tending sheep on the back hills of Israel. It was David who killed Goliath with only a sling and a stone at 17 years of age. And the people loved David. And David became a mighty warrior for God. And the Lord gave David many victories. In fact, the people even sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. But because of, of that love and devotion that people had towards David, it caused a problem. In fact, it caused a problem with Saul. Saul, when you know, he, Saul was man's choice and, and the king of Israel Israel at the time became very jealous of David. Now, the Bible said in 1 Samuel 18 and 8, now just hold your Bible open, and I don't have it on the screen tonight, but the Bible says this, then Saul was very angry and saying displeased him, and he said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed only thousands, and now what more can he have but the kingdom? And so Saul eyed David from that day forward. In other words, Saul was simply jealous of David. 
meaning that he eyed David, meaning that Saul kept his eyes on him. He watched David's every move. In fact, he was so jealous that he tried to kill David. And while David was playing music in Saul's presence, the Bible says that a distressing spirit came upon Saul. And Saul had this idea. And since he had a spear in his hand, he decided he's going to throw that spear at David and pin him to the wall. And now this happened twice. And both times David escaped from Saul. The devil was trying to kill God's anointed. How many know? How many know that? The devil doesn't want you living for God. Doesn't want you sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Doesn't want you preaching the gospel of Christ. Doesn't want you worshiping the Lord. Doesn't want you to win anybody to God. And so that devil was after David trying to destroy him. Now Saul was raged within his heart. Became very jealous of David. The Bible said now Saul was afraid of David. Listen to this. Saul was afraid of David, this young man, because the Lord was with him but had departed from Saul. And so Saul had recognized that God's hand was upon this young man. God's hand was upon David. And uh, the reason the Lord departed from Saul was because Saul first departed from God. How many know that? Amen. Bible says that you take a step towards God. He'll take a step towards you. But Saul, listen, he departed from God. He did his own thing. Saul was the kind of man that did not want to obey God. He wanted to do his own thing, his own way without the counsel of the Lord in his life. And so Saul was a very prideful man. He had good beginnings, but he came very prideful, became very puffed up in himself. And he was a very, he was, uh, he was only concerned about himself and he was full of ego and he was full of pride and full of self image. And that's right. That's Saul. It's all about himself. Saul is simply a type of that apostate church that's jealous of, of the spiritual. Amen. Now folks, you know that the Saul, uh, that Saul didn't just want to pin David to that wall, but Saul had raged inside and Saul was hoping not to just pin David to that wall, but Saul's intentions was to kill him, to spear him. That's what Saul really wanted to do. And there are people that do the same thing today. They're so raged with jealousy that they've killed others because of it. Ritz, uh, fits of rage and jealousy. But in the church, we may not kill our brother or our sister physically, but we'll murder them with the spear of our tongue. Come on, church. Amen. That's right. If we don't like someone, amen, we might slice and dice them up one side, down the other. Jealousy within the church will do nothing but hinder the ministry of God. It'll hinder the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and try to destroy the work of God. And how many people have left the church because they were simply jealous of, of somebody else? Amen. Come on, church. They were jealous in their fits of rage and they'd get mad and have a temper tantrums and stomp off and get all angry and things like that. Like this, and people are jealous because someone else got to sing instead of them. Preachers have struggled with jealousy because someone preached better message or got a greater response of the people or whatever it might be. And uh, instead of loving each other and encourage each other in the faith, uh, and we we can we can rip them and shred them and slash them apart. And folks, uh, we've got to decide what side that we're on. Church, uh, Amen. Uh, are we doing this for self? Are we doing this for self recognition? Uh, is this just so people can see how great I am, or am I better? Than my sister or my brother or so and so or are we doing this for the glory of God in other words we got to decide whose kingdom are we trying to build ours or his listen we're in this thing together we're brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah I just want to be a part I just want to be a part of the kingdom of God I just want to be a servant of the most high God friend if we allow ourselves to live and operate according to the flesh my friend then we'll act out of the flesh and we'll produce nothing but problems within the body of Christ jealousy and envy and strife are not according to the spirit. The Bible makes it very clear it's according to the flesh. We see this with the church of 1 Corinthians and the book of 1 Corinthians and the Corinth church and there was division and, and there was jealousies and things like that and it's nothing but of the flesh. But let's not spear our brother or our sister with hatred and jealousy but rather my beloved friends love one another in the spirit of Christ. Pray for one another. Help one another. Amen church. That's what we ought to be doing. Encouraging one another supporting one another, lifting up one another before the Lord uh, because we're on the Lord's side. I want you to know that we're in a family of God. We're children of God. Hallelujah. And we're working for his kingdom. So let's do all that we can together to glorify the holy name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As long as he's glorified, as long as he is lifted up, as long, hallelujah, amen, as Jesus receives the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. So make sure that we're in this for the right purpose and the right reason. I 
I love God. I love the Lord. Whether recognition or not doesn't matter. Amen. I just want to glorify God. I just want to praise the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, because of Saul's jealousy, he tried many attempts to kill David. Amen. And now David ends up fleeing for his life. And folks, we find ourselves in distress. Or if someone in the church hurts you in some way, the answer isn't to run away. Come on, church. I said the answer isn't to run away. What am I, I'm trying to say is this. The world isn't going to be able to help you, at least not the kind of help that we really need. Now, David, he ran from Saul. He went into the Philistines' territory. He, he, God didn't tell him to go there, but he went there trying to save his own life, save his own skin. But listen, let me tell you this tonight. The world does not know God. It wants nothing to do with God. It doesn't have the mind of God. And if it doesn't have the mind of God, it doesn't have the will of God. And if it doesn't have the will of God, it can't help you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And so rather it can't help uh, give Christians godly counsel. So why do we go to the world for help? That's a good question. David did exactly what so many people do today. Someone offends you in the church. And so we decide to distance ourselves from the church and buddy up with the world. That's we've, I've seen this happen through the years with different people in different situations. Uh, my beloved friends and Christians and, and family in Christ, what fellowship does light have with darkness? It doesn't have any fellowship. The world would do nothing but pull you out, pull you down, pull you away give you wrong advice and make you think that you don't need God when you know good and well every one of us need God. You need God. I need God. You need him a good day, a bad day, in between day. We need the Lord at all times. I can't walk without holding his hand. I love the Lord. He's my God, my Savior and I need his help and strength and wisdom and guidance every second, every moment of my life of every day. And oh my friend of the world, I make, make you think that you're missing all kinds of fun serving the Lord. Well my friend, there may be pleasure in sin but it's only for a season. But destruction comes to those that choose Choose not to serve God as we've studied these past several weeks in the book of Revelation. But Jesus said this. He said, enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many are going that direction, and many there be which go in thereat. Many go that way, but narrow is the way that leads to life, and there be few that find it. I, I want to know tonight, are there any few tonight that have found the straight gate, that have found the way to eternal life? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God, thank God, thank God that you're saved by the blood of the Lamb. You don't deserve it, but thank God that you are, amen. You see, by David going to the Philistine territory, he almost lost his life. You go back out in that world. Come on, church. He almost lost his life, and they would have killed him. The world only loves you if you can give it what it wants. But once you no longer give it what it wants, it cares nothing about you. I'm talking about this world system that wants nothing to do with God. Oh, everybody loved the prodigal son till he ran out of money. Amen. 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 Until he ran out, and then he came in wanting. Nobody wanted to help him. He's about to slop at the pigs. Oh, yes, you give all kinds of friends when you have what they want. But when you no longer have what they want, they leave you high and dry. That's the world. The world is more hypocritical than you can ever imagine. But it's not the answer. Jesus saved us out of the world. He saved us out of sin. He saved, saved us out of destruction and gave us life, eternal life, abundant life, wonderful life. And we can praise God and give him glory for that. David might have thought that he was doing the right thing when really he was doing the wrong thing. Listen, my beloved, going to the Philistine territory, that wasn't the right thing to do. You don't have to pray about it that. Amen. You don't find comfort in the world. I find comfort in the presence of God. You know, I find comfort in prayer. I find comfort in his word. I find, I find comfort in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And sometimes we do the wrong thing thinking it's the right thing when God never told you to go in the first place. Someone say amen to that tonight. Sometimes we're doing the right thing. when really It's the wrong thing when God never told us to go in the first place. Sometimes we act before we pray. We've all done it. I've done it. You've done it. We're all guilty of that. I realize that. We, I mean, when we might be, have saved ourselves from a lot of grief and trouble, if we just would have prayed before we acted, if we just waited on God, let's get a word from the Lord. But sometimes we already have false intentions in our heart. Oh, we want to do it anyway. So we make a real quick prayer to God. Oh, yep, God wants me to do that. God never spoke to you. That was you saying you wanted to do that. And we have to discern the difference between the voice of God and our voice, the voice of God and the world's voice, the voice of God and the devil's voice, the voice of God and the false voice, the voice of God and our own voice. we got to discern the difference, amen, to find the will of God in our life and situation. Well, now out of David's experience, this is what came with Psalm 34. Out of this came Psalm 34, a very powerful psalm. David shared in this psalm some guiding principles for his own followers, for us today. And this will help when we find ourselves 
ourselves in a tight or a difficult situation. It'll help us to live a life that's pleasing unto God. What are some guiding principles for victory? I want to talk about that just a little bit here tonight. I don't want to keep you too long, but some guiding principles for victory. What did David do? Number one, I want to say this. He blessed the Lord. He blessed the Lord. Now turn with me, please, to Psalm 34 and look at verse 1. I love this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Then look at verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Praise God. So I find here that David blessed the Lord. David was glad to be out of the enemy territory where he probably shouldn't have been in the first place and back in the wilderness with his men. David blessed the Lord and for David knew that it would only be the hand of God that delivered him from the power of his enemies and the destruction of his enemies. And David used the words like this. He used the words bless and boast and magnify and exalt. You say, well, pastor, what's so, what's so great about those words? These are the words that come from those that love God. They bless the Lord. They boast in God. They magnify the Lord. They exalt the name of Jesus. This is the language from those that adore God and worship the Lord that are devoted to Jesus. And it sought to be the vocabulary of every child of God. Uh, our vocabulary is not to be copied, uh, is not to mimic the world's vocabulary. The world knows cursings and swearings. Oh, but God, when he saves you, he changes your heart. Jesus said of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When, when God changes you, when God washes you, when God cleanses you, when God gives you eternal life, not only does it change you, change your heart, but he changes your vocabulary to no longer saying swearings and cursings, but now blessings and glorifying God. God and worship in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a difference it makes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I, I believe it was Evan, Evan Roberts, you know, uh, he was a, uh, a coal miner in Wales and worked with those old coal miners. And I mean, there'd be swearings and cursings and all this kind of thing all the time. Well, revival came. Amen. The Welch revival to Wales. Y'all remember that? The Welch revival came and people getting saved, people being delivered. And there came a time when he went to the old coal mines uh, to go to work and no longer was he hearing uh, swearings and curses of men, but praises unto God as they were worshiping the Lord and singing hymns under the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Changes you. Changes your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We too can say, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my, my mouth. Uh, continually means at all times. It's a way of life. In my heart, I'm blessing the Lord. I'm blessing God. Whether you're at work or you're at home or you're shopping, you can bless the Lord continually in your heart. I'll be on that school bus and I'll be singing praises unto God. I'll be worshiping the Lord. Why not? Praise God. Hallelujah. Just praise him. God puts a song in your heart. Listen to me. You ask God to put a song in your heart, he'll put a song in your heart. Maybe it's been a long time since some of you have been able to sing. I'm being sing. I'm where not just praises here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, but I mean a song in your heart where you wake up in the morning singing unto God, praising God. Oh, it strengthens your church. It'll renew and revive you. You'll sense the presence of God. Oh, yes, hallelujah. He's a living God. He's not dead. That religion, this is life. Amen. I love it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I mean, I can't sing, but I can sing. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. Nobody's ever asked me to do a special, but I'll sing unto God anyway. I'll do the best that I can. Some of you, some of you, I'm jealous of you. Amen. You have such a beautiful voice and you can sing, but I just wasn't gifted that way. That's just not my calling. But listen, every one of us are called to worship. Every one of us are called to sing. And we can do the best that we can and make a joyful sound, a joyful noise unto the Lord our God. It has something to do with the heart condition. God puts a song in there. You sense the presence of the Lord and it strengthens and helps you. Hallelujah. Oh, I love to sing. I remember after I got God saved. I'm singing all day long. I'd go up on those high towers at Exxon, 200 feet up in the air, and I'd sing unto God. I'd sing unto the Lord and praise his holy name. Nobody can hear me but God and the birds. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It just felt good. Amen. You know, I'm going to say this. The devil wants to take out your song. The devil wants to take away your song. He didn't want you singing. You know what happens when you sing? The presence of God comes. Countenance changes. There's something different. There's a sparkle in your eye. There's life in your eye. There, there's a blessing on your countenance as the presence of God comes because you're worshiping the Lord. As you worship God, he in turn touches you and blesses you. As you bless God, he blesses you. You bless God, he blesses you. You bless God, he blesses you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Sometimes it might take a little while to get that old engine warmed up, but once it does, hallelujah, you can bless him and praise him, and God will turn bless you and, and with his presence and strengthen you. Praise the Lord. You praise God. You worship God. Hallelujah. Some of you get in that shower and just sing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just worship God. Just praise him. Get in that bathroom. You just praise God. Amen. Whatever it might be, you worship the Lord. You worship the Lord. Amen. I get up in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. Monday morning is the toughest day to get up in the morning. Monday, my goodness, after a whole weekend, after Sunday morning, Sunday night. And I get up in the morning. Now, I might not be singing right away, but when I get up them stairs, I say this. Oh, God, help me, Lord. I need you. <laughs> I can't. Lord, I need strength. My body's hurting. Oh, God, God, get me through this day. Amen. But I tell you, the Lord's so faithful. He'll put a song in your heart. Amen. Sister Jackie, you know what I'm talking about? Right after you've had maybe one or two cups of coffee, now you can sing glory to God. Hallelujah. God helps us. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Little octane never hurt. Amen. Get that engine running. Hallelujah. But you praise God. You worship the Lord. And you have the word continually means at all times. It's a way of life. I'm In my heart, I'm blessing the Lord. Whether you're at work, home, shop. You can bless him. The, the name Lord is used 16 times in this psalm. 16 times the name Lord. If initially David was uh, speaking to his own men, then he was calling him to interrupt warfare and focus on worship. Because that's very much very important when we have spiritual warfare. You see, folks, today we're in a war. You know that. We're in a war today, church. But it's not a war that can be fought in the physical, in the flesh, but only in the spiritual Ephesians 6 and 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. Listen, this is what we fight against, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. It says principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. The word wrestle means struggle. It means fight. It, it indicates that a Christian will experience resistance and opposition. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Do I have a witness tonight? There is resistance. There is opposition. You ever tried to worship? There's resistance. You ever tried to pray? There's resistance. You ever tried to get ready to go to church? There's resistance. When your body doesn't feel good, there's resistance. And, of course, the devil tries to come in for the attack when you don't feel very well because he comes at an opportune time. But it's okay. You're going to get better, glory to God. See, there are forces behind the spiritual veil that do all they can to hinder the Christian from serving God. And there's a battleground that we can't see with our physical eyes. But we can feel and we can sense it in our spirit. In our spirit, we sense the oppression. We feel the effects of it. And these forces are principalities and they are powers behind the scenes against the rulers of darkness of this age and their spiritual host of weakness that oppose and bring resistance to the Christian. Our struggle or our fight and the things we go through is simply uh, the enemy trying to discourage you from trusting God, from praying, from worshiping, from singing, from serving the Lord, trying to stop. This whole thing is spiritual. Every part, every moment, every second of it. And Paul said, for the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, they're not fleshy, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. It's only through God these things can be pulled down. It's only through prayer. It's only through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that these things and strongholds and powers of darkness can be broken down and pulled down. It's only in him. You see, when you find it hard to pray, when it seems difficult to seek God, or when it seems the enemy has waged war against you, this isn't the time to quit, but it's the time that we must stand that's right church take a stand in God stand in the spirit and you bless the Lord with all of your heart amen hey, you got to do it yourself you got to bless the Lord with all of your heart worship the king of glory the eternal God of heaven bless his holy name that's what David was doing amen this is the time to stand and magnify the Lord and to exalt his holy name see there's great strength in praise notice what David said in verse 3 and let us exalt his name together that means us together as a body of Christ. He's calling for corporate assembly and worship. The church worshiping. The church praising. The church magnifying together. Wasn't it wonderful this morning how the glory of God fell and God opened up the heavens and poured out his spirit and visited his people. Because the people, as Sister Laura Lee said, they came this morning with a heart of worship. They were ready to praise. They were ready to worship. And what a difference it made. Praise God. 
Amen. The Bible said where one puts a thousand a flight, two put ten thousand a flight. That's why I love corporate prayer. That's why I like us to come together on Tuesday nights and pray together. There's your personal private prayer life in that closet where you shut yourself up with God wherever that closet is. But then we come together corporately where one puts a thousand, two put ten thousand. There's something about the body of Christ coming together and uniting in their hearts and faith and one accord and worshiping the Lord. When it seems hard to pray, just begin to magnify the Lord. When it seems the enemy is coming against you, just begin to magnify the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, you know the story when the enemy forces came together against Jehoshaphat. And uh, I, I love the story because he did the right thing and he sought the face of God. He got a word from the Lord and he heard a word from God and the Bible said that they send praisers to the front lines. I mean, listen to me, uh, nobody, nobody in that world think that's the right thing to do. I, I imagine all the, all the people, all the critics, you know, do you know what you're doing? What are you doing? Are you crazy? That enemy is going to destroy you. But see, Jehoshaphat said, you don't understand. I got a word from God and I don't care if the whole world disagrees with you. If you've got a word from God, you hold to the word of God and God will help you and God will be with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? He will guide and direct and help you and strength and he praised God but that's what he did he sent praisers to the front lines and, and they didn't hold their hands up with a sword but instead they lifted their hands and praised and they blessed the name of the Lord and the Bible said they praised God in the beauty of holiness the beauty of holiness the whole congregation worshiped God and God gave them a victory and it confused the enemy it confused those devils and those demons and demonic spirits of the enemy and it confused them and they turned against one another and they destroyed each other and God set an ambush against them and God gave them the victory my beloved friends in Christ it's time to bless the Lord and magnify the holy name of Jesus the Lord will fight our battles this is not the, in the physical but it's in the spiritual we will bless him we will praise him we will worship him Puritan preacher Thomas Watson once said this in prayer we act like men or like people but in praise we act like angels hallelujah glory to God I can imagine angels encompass us sometimes and saying, why don't you praise him more? Why don't you magnify him more? Why don't you worship him more? Why don't you exalt him more? He's Lord. He's God. I've seen the Lord of glory and the throne of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray that God would put a stirring in your heart that nothing would hold you back. Nothing could keep you back. I want God. I want his presence. I want to be near the Lord. I just desire God. Hallelujah. Such a drawing, such a, 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 a tugging, a pulling in our hearts. It says, I just want the presence of God. Praise God. David gave thanks to the Lord by magnifying and exalting his name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just like we were doing tonight. What are, you, what are we just waiting on the Lord? There's no hurry. Just waiting on God. See, you need this for tomorrow. You need this for Tuesday. You need this for Wednesday. You need it for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday. You need this. You need the strength of God, the presence of the Lord. Yes. And we just begin to magnify the Lord and worship the Lord. And we just sing, you know, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Just worship God. What's the hurry? It's got to be one, two, 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 real quick, real fast. No, wait a minute. Let's just wait on the Lord. Let's just wait on God. You know, sometimes we come in from a busy day, and sometimes our hearts just aren't ready yet. So maybe we need to take time to get our hearts ready as we come to the presence of God. We're not going to rush in, rush out. Remember Esther, she prepared herself before, before going before the king. Remember that? She prepared herself before rushing in. And sometimes we just got to prepare our hearts and prepare ourselves before coming into the presence of Almighty God. David would magnify and exalt the Lord because David loved God. David was very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. By the way, it was the Old Testament, very sensitive to the Spirit of God. The anointing and the presence of God was upon him. He was gifted of the Lord. God, that was man, God's chosen man. That was the Lord anointed of God, chosen of God. And he worshiped the Lord. He began to play with the stringed instruments. And the presence and the glory would come so much to the effect that Saul would call for David and say, play. 
because Saul had a distressing spirit upon him, but the music would soothe him. Praise God. And sometimes I love it when Abby just plays the piano, and I believe the music just soothes the hearts of the people. I think the devil has a fit. He says, I can't take it. Get me out of here. I can't stand it. Get me out of there. And all of a sudden, the presence of God comes. The presence of God is ushered in the place and fills the whole place with an aroma that you can't see with the natural eye, but you can sense it in the spirit of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. If you get bored with God, the problem is not with God. I just want you to know that tonight. <laughs> okay? Hallelujah. Praise God. And so I, I see that David magnified God. So we, we see what David, what, what the Lord did for David. What did God do for David? Well, number one, God answered David's prayer. Look at verse four. Now read it with me. I sought the Lord and he heard me. What did he do? He heard me. I sought God, he heard me, and delivered me from all my what? Fears. Delivered me from all my fears. Yeah, David struggled with fear as well, just as anybody else might struggle with the fear. Verse 15 says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, on the saved, on the redeemed, and his, his ears are open to their cry. God knows and hears the cry of his people, of his children. You see, we know that fear is not of God. God is not the author of the origin of fear. It's a tool that Satan uses to try to come against us. We know that God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. And then another thing I noticed, number two, is that God provided for David's needs. Look at verse 9 and 10. All fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lion lacks and suffers hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. You know what that means? That God will meet and provide every need in your life, not greed, but need. God will see to it. God will meet. God will provide those that trust him, those that fear him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There's the healthy fear, amen. And the church needs to get back to that healthy fear because we've lost it. Fear of the Lord. Even during the day, I will not eat in the sanctuary. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I just want you to know. I just have that conviction. I don't know why that is because I just feel like when we come together, whether it's on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, when you're here or not here, it doesn't matter. I just feel like this is what happens. When we step in here, it's holy ground. I just feel like that. I, I can come out from the busy world and just walk into the sanctuary and I can feel the presence of God. There's something about that. There's, there, there's a hollowness. There's a holiness about this. I know it's just a building, but this is the place where the church of God, the saints, the redeemed, uh, the children of God gather together and worship God and pray together and hear the preaching of the word of God. Amen. This is where we worship. This is where we pray and sing. Amen. This is holy ground. So take your shoes off. Amen. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. Let's see if I can do it. I did it. 57, I still do it. <laughs> no, my friend, I, I look at it differently maybe than others do. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need the fear of God, a healthy fear back in the church again. Children need to be taught the fear of God. Teenagers need to be taught the fear of God. Parents need to be taught the fear of God once again. Back in the church. God provided. And then God delivered David. Number three, God delivered David from trouble. Look at verse 17. The righteous cry out, the saved, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all, all, can you say all, of their troubles. Praise God that he delivers us out of all of our troubles. Maybe you're troubled. God, cry out to God. Let him touch and deliver you. God protects uh, David from danger. Number four, God protects David from danger. Look at verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. There are those who put their trust in angels rather than the Lord of the angels. When we pray, we pray to God, not the angels. Angels are God's ministering spirits. And he commands them according to his will, according to, uh, to, to, to do his service, according to his will. But folks, my trust must be in the Lord God Almighty, not in angels. Therefore, we worship the Lord, not angels. Uh, see, an angel didn't die on the cross for you. An angel didn't shed his blood for you. Uh, Jesus did. The Son of God did. He redeemed you with his redeeming life, his blood. Then notice that David didn't boast about his own cleverness or skill or ideas. He didn't go bragging about him. He didn't do that. No, 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 no. But rather, he boasted about what? The Lord. He said, man, God got me out of this mess. He said, man, I got myself in the mess, but God got me out of the mess. Sometimes, amen, praise God for his grace and his mercy. We get ourselves in a mess, and God's grace and mercy help us get us out of the mess. But we have to have a change of heart. We have to have a change of heart. 
okay? If David had a change of heart. He said, man, I messed up. I shouldn't have gone to the Philistines. I shouldn't have gone over there. I messed up. Boy, did I mess up. And so what did David do? He repented. He repented because this psalm is a psalm of repentance. You see that. You see it in the way in his attitude, okay? And so it's repentance unto God. And so rather than boasting he, uh, in himself, he didn't do that. David boasted in who God was and what, and, who God, and what he did. David took no credit for himself. In fact, he said in verse 6, This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The word poor man means this. Broken means humble. It means poor in spirit. David says this. This poor man means this. I need God. If you get to a place where you don't need God, God will get you to a place to where you need God. Amen. He'll strip everything away from you until you need him. If you get to the place where you don't need God, he'll get you to a place where you need God. That's how much he loves you. Well, why is all this happening to me? Because God's trying to get your attention. God's trying to get a hold of you. God's trying to talk to you. God's trying to bring you to a place where you need him. You know you need him, but you just need to know that you need him. Does that make sense? You know you need him, but you just need to know that you need him. The key to victory is the emptying of self and pride. You want something. You want God to hear. You want God to answer. You want God to move. Then it's the, the key to victory here is the emptiness of self, the, the emptiness of pride. The world is so full of itself. People are so full of themselves. But you get a place of brokenness. That's what's so special about David. Yeah, he messed up. He did some dumb things. We do, don't we? do dumb things. Sin does dumb things. But when he emptied himself out to God, the Lord heard his cry. You see, we're in the Psalms where David, David, the Psalm 51, where David, David cried out to God, and the Lord heard his cry, and God restored him the joy of his salvation. David saw himself as what? As nothingness. It's not an easy place to get to, but as nothingness. It's called poor in spirit. It's the best place to be. And now God can move with might and power now because when you're poor in spirit, it says this, you recognize this, that I have nothing in my power. I need God. I can't make it without the Lord. I need him. I need God. You see, David saw God's people as nothing in themselves. And because of that, they had everything. They belonged to the Lord. Listen, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 8 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, can you say, for your sakes? For your sakes. Turn to somebody next to you and say, for your sakes. This is for you, buddy. This is for you. He became poor. God, who's rich in mercy, became poor that you through his poverty, through the poverty of Christ, might become rich. In other words, Jesus left his glory and humbled himself and became a man. Jesus lowered himself and became one of us. That's pretty low. That's pretty low. When you start thinking, you know, like you're getting to be high and mighty, just remember this. You came from dirt. At least women came out of the rib, but man, we came from dirt. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Hey, man, you're just a pile of dirt. <laughs> when that boss chews you out, just start laughing and said, you know what? You're just a pile of dirt. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Jesus left his glory, humbled himself, became a man. He became one of us. He became one of us. Emmanuel, God with us. He became, it's the word personified. <clears throat> Where the word took on human flesh. And, 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 and through him, we who are poor, wretched, and blind might be made rich. Spiritually, we are poor, wretched, blind, but we might be made rich. Before you were saved, you were poor, but through his poverty, he made us rich. Through his poverty, he humbled himself and became one of us. Now, I may not have much as far as material possessions are concerned, and I might not own much. I realize that. I might not make much money. I know that. But my friend, it's not about money. The world says you're poor. The world says you're deprived. The world says you're unfortunate, but it doesn't matter what the world says. Their estimate of me is not important. The Bible says this. I am rich. That's what the Bible says. I am rich because of the riches of his glory and the riches of his grace. Spiritually, when we were born again, we were born rich. Through Christ, we share the riches of God's grace and glory and mercy and the unsearchable riches 
riches of Christ. Our, our heavenly father, he's not poor. He's rich. He owns a cattle on a thousand hill. And he has made us rich in his son, Jesus Christ. We, were, we are the richest people on the face of the earth. Turn to somebody tonight and say, I'm rich. Hey, you might not have two cents to rub together, but you're rich in God. You're rich in Christ. My true friend, my friend, true riches come from God. The spiritual is always emphasized over the material. Spiritual over the material. Material is what? Temporary. It's all going to fade. It's all going to burn up. I want, you, I want you to tell me, when you pass away from this life to the next, how much loot are you going to take with you? <laughs> Jeffrey, how much you taking? <laughs> Brother Tim, we're not taking, no, we're not taking anything, are we? Brother Tom, I got two Tims now. Tim Duo, <laughs> I got two Tims. Tim Square, not Tim Square. That don't sound right, Tim Square. <laughs> Jamie? <laughs> What am I saying? I'm saying you're not taking it with you. God gives it to you now to use it for his glory. Isn't that good? God gives it to you now to use it for his glory. We're the richest people on the face of the earth because true riches come from God. The spiritual is always over the material, but true, but spiritual riches are eternal. David feared the Lord. He belonged to the Lord and was set apart as his righteous one. He was serving to the most high God. Folks, knowing who the Lord is and knowing who we are in Christ ought to make us want to bless the name of Jesus Christ, our God. Knowing who he is and knowing who we are in Christ ought to do something inside of you. Put a song and a joy and a shout and a kick to your step. Some of us have such a heavy burden and load on our shoulders these days. Sometimes we carry it around for days and weeks and months. Perhaps you just need to take a little time and bless the Lord. Just begin to praise his name. Just begin to cry out to him. Call upon the matchless name of Jesus. And just say, Jesus, just say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Amen. Lord, you're so good to me. Lord, I just want to magnify your holy name. I just want to exalt you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for filling me with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for being so faithful to me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank God for the cross. Just begin to bless God and worship him. You'll notice a difference. David did it. <laughs> even when every, even even when David had a rotten day, you ever had a rotten day? A rotten day is when you come home and your home in there. A rotten day was when your wife and kids are taken and all your possessions are gone and the enemies come and raided you. That's a rotten day. A rotten day is when all his 600 men turned against him. His own church, his own congregation turned against David and wanted to kill him. That's a rotten day. How's your day going? <laughs> That's a rotten day. David running high? No. What did he do? He was a man of God. You know what he did? He said... God's been there before for me. He'll be there again. He said, I know what to do. I've been in this position before. I've been in this predicament before. I know what I do. I'm going to go find God. And so David saw the face of God. The Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord. David got in the presence of God. David prayed and David worshiped God. And he got in the presence of the Lord. And God gave him a word and told him what he needed to do. And God says, I'll give you the victory. Yes. Now, David would have. Went out into the world and tried to find the answer. He wouldn't have got it. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. If David probably went to most of the church, he wouldn't have got it either these days. They just said, David, you just need to go see a psychiatrist. No, 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 no. Why don't you say this? David, why don't you do it the old-fashioned way? Why don't you do it the old Bible way? Well, what's that? Get down on your face and seek God until you get a word. Oh, but I don't have time for that. I got to hurry. I got work to do and I got things to do. And I, mm, I, mm, 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 and now you're not getting anything. David encouraged. He strengthened himself. Where? In the presence of God. The old-fashioned way. You know what? The Bible works. The Bible way works. The Bible way works. I love it. The Bible works. And he got a word from the Lord. And he did what God told him to do. And guess what? He got the victory. And he got his wife back, got his kids back, got his house back, got his things back. Amen. And defeated the enemy. The devil has no business in your home. Has no business in your life, no business in your marriage. No business there. You might be here tonight, you know, you just feel like somewhat you're in a prison in a sense. 
Or perhaps you feel like you just that life is such a struggle. It just seems hard. I get it. Yep, I understand. I get it. It comes to all of us. Maybe you feel trapped like David. The enemy's trying to destroy you, speak a bunch of lies to you, trying to get you to believe the lies that's true. The enemy's fighting you so hard, fighting your mind, fighting your thoughts. He's warring against you. He's wearing you down. He's trying to bring you down with discouragement. Maybe you've con con contemplated running to the Philistines, so to speak, but maybe, maybe you thought about just quitting all together. Yeah, I know. Thought about giving up. Yep, it crosses our minds from time to time. You feel like that at times. But my friend, let me tell you something. That's not the answer. Giving up's not the answer. To give up means to give up too much. I'm not giving up. The answer is to put your faith and trust in the one who delivers, the one who loves you, the one that knows what's best for you. His name is Jesus. And let me tell you something. He's still Lord. He's still God. He's still in control. He's still supreme. He still delivers. He still saves. He still sets free. He still provides. He still protects. He still leads and guides. He still speaks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Folks, just begin to bless the Lord. Just begin to bless the Lord. And, and you will feel that heavy burden begin to lift. Just bless him. The Bible says his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So why don't we do that? Why don't we just bless the Lord tonight? This is bless the Lord. Praise God. Can we stand to our feet tonight and, and let's bless him. Why don't we come up front here together tonight? Praise God. And why don't we just praise him? Why don't we love him? Why don't we bless him? Why don't we worship God? Hallelujah. Just begin to bless the Lord. Begin to bless his holy name tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just come and say, God, I'm here tonight to bless you. I'm here tonight to worship you. I'm here tonight to exalt you, Father, in the name of the Lord. I'm here to magnify the name of Jesus. Tonight in this house, God, I choose to bless you. And so tonight as we come together as a body of Christ, we're just going to say, God, I'm going to thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for washing my sins away. And you have a heart of thankfulness, a heart attitude that blesses God and worships the Lord. And as Abby plays, and she plays so beautifully, let's just bless him. Let's just worship the Lord. Take a few moments here tonight and just magnify the Lord. You may be burdened in your heart. I understand that. God knows that more than you do, more than I do. God God knows that, but you bring that before the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Say, God, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to exalt you, Father. And I'm going to magnify the name of the Lord in this place, in this house, this holy ground that we're standing on here tonight, this Sunday night service, Sunday night service where some of the saints are able to gather together and worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Oh, Lord, praise you, your name. Oh, Yes, hallelujah. For your, your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just sing that together. Again, I sing praises to your name. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've come tonight to bless you, Lord Jesus. I've come tonight to worship you. Hallelujah. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to you. Hallelujah. You can stand, you can sit, you can kneel down, whatever you want to do. Just worship God tonight and bless the name of the Lord. Through your trial, through your circumstances, through your situation, you bless him anyway. To be, I sing glory to your name. Hallelujah. Praise God. I sing glory to your name. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, just saturate yourself with him. I sing glory to his name, oh Lord, glory to your name, oh Lord. 
great and greatly to be. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. I sing praises to okay take a few moments tonight and let's just press into his presence to say lord i love you lord i praise you lord i need you maybe you're carrying a heavy load maybe there's a heavy burden in your heart in your life on your shoulders whatever it might be but take it to jesus tonight know that he knows it more than you do knows it and he knows what you need he knows what you're going through he sees it he knows it before you do he knows the trial before you know the trial he knows everything about you knows every thought knows every feeling knows everything i want you to know that god loves you god cares and he's right here in this house in this place as we gather together by faith as 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 a, as a family of god as a church of living god as the bride of christ and the lord just enters in touches you helps you strengthens you praise the lord as you put the effort into blessing god he will in turn bless you he will in turn bless you praise god hallelujah praise the lord god we praise you lord we worship you tonight lord we gather together we gather together our faith. We gather together in song. We gather together our voices, Lord, and we just praise you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glorify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful and marvelous, oh God. We exalt you, and we lift up the name of Jesus on high. We glorify the Lord tonight. We glorify the Lord tonight. Oh, yes, hallelujah, Jesus. awesome in the presence of God just tell the Lord you love him just say God I love you you know sometimes we have such a powerful service on a Sunday morning we don't think we need as much on Sunday night but I want you to know I need him just as much on Sunday night too I need him just as much and I know that you feel that way too I know you do 
because you've come back on Sunday night, you're able to come back. Thank God. And you just say, Lord, I, I need you. Lord, I need you. I need you. I can't make it without you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, I exalt thee, Lord, my Lord. Sing that I exalt thee together. And I exalt of thee. I exalt of thee. I exalt of I exalt thee, Lord. gather up three or four or five in a group at a time and just pray for one another before we leave tonight. Just gather up together as brothers and sisters in Christ and just pray for each other. Lord, bless them. In the name of the Lord, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we magnify you, Father, in the name of the Lord. Father God, we need your strength and your touch and your help and your spirit and your presence and your truth and your word. Father God, I pray for my brothers and my sisters in Christ. And God, I know I know it's not easy these days, but God, by the power of your spirit, Father, we can do this, Father, by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, because it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And so what we need is the power of the Holy Ghost. Give my brothers and my sisters strength, God. And I pray, God, that you'll put a song in their heart, God. Let it begin when they wake up in the morning, God. Put a song in their heart. They begin to worship you and to praise you. Through all the trials, all the difficulties, all the hardships, uh, spiritual warfare. God, I pray in the name of the Lord that we'll put into practice the word of God. We'll do as David did in Psalm 34, and we'll sing praises unto God. We'll worship you. We'll cry out to God. We'll come to you broken and humble before the Lord, and we'll recognize our need for Jesus and say, God, we can't do this in ourselves. So, God, I pray for word of life. I pray for the body of Christ. I pray that you'll strengthen them. I pray that you'll baptize and refill them with the Holy Ghost. I pray that you'll speak the word into their heart that they need. I pray that you'll give them the word of encouragement, 
strengthen and help them throughout the day and throughout the week, God. In their homes, in their children, in their families, in their marriages, God. In their workplace, God. May your glory shine upon every person. The glory of God, the countenance of your people will radiate, God, because they've been in the presence of God, because they've been worshiping you and praising you. I pray, God, help us to apply this by faith. Live it by faith. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your truth. Thank you, God, for your spirit and your presence. God, minister, I pray to the body of Christ, your children, the family of God. Oh, God, you are worthy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray your blessing. I pray, God, I pray your blessing. I pray your blessing on your people, God. God, give us the strength to live for you. Give us the help, God. Keep our minds stayed upon Christ, spiritually thinking. Let our minds and hearts be saturated with your word. I pray, Father, in the name of the Lord. Oh, God, you're worthy, Lord Jesus. You are Father God, the name of the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, God, touch those that are sick, touch Abby, Lord, touch Mimi, Father God, touch Izzy, touch those that are sick with this bronchial cold, Father God, I pray the name of the Lord, touch Michael, God, I pray, Father, that you would heal them in the name of the Lord, and I pray that when they wake up in the morning, they'll be strengthened, I pray they'll feel strengthened and renewed in their spirit, their heart, and their body physically, Father God, I pray that they'll get a good night's rest tonight, a sound sleep tonight, I pray, touch them and heal them by the power of your spirit the blood of Jesus Christ, for you are our God, our Lord, and our healer, our deliverer, great physician. There is a balm in Gilead. His name is Jesus. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright morning star. He's wonderful. He's our counselor, our God, our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we pray this today, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. you Lord hallelujah don't you love the Lord praise God amen praise God thank you Lord so let's do this let's apply these principles do the best you can take time with the Lord he will renew your strength the Bible says those that wait upon the Lord they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint God will exchange our strength for his strength and we'll be running in God's strength just like Elijah did when he, when he ran past Ahab's chariot to Jezreel. 25 miles. Pew, because he ran in the might of God. We can run in the might of God. Not in our own might, but in the might of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless every one of you. That concludes the service here tonight. But the Lord bless you. God bless you. Go out of here strengthened today. It's been a wonderful day in the Lord. God bless you, church. See you, ladies, tomorrow night at 630 for Bible study. Midweek service this Wednesday at 7, Rangers and Missionettes. Men's Bible study Thursday, 630. God bless you, church. Thank you for those that tuned in and watched. I pray you're blessed. I pray you sense the presence of God. And I pray the Lord has spoken to your heart. Take it. Stand upon a live by it. Amen. God bless everybody. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name.